Okay, so now we are moving on to name that graph. So for name that graph, we are going to be given a graph and then some information about the scaling. Um, so we are going to have to read the x min and the x max and the x scale so we know what the values are if there is a period change. And then also the y min, y scale to see if it's going by twos or ones or something like that. Okay, so we're going to highlight one period of the function for each. So I'm going to highlight one period. We're going to start on the y-axis um, because we haven't done any graphs with horizontal shapes, horizontal shifts yet. Okay, so that is one period. So what we're going to do is what is the shape of the function? So really, is it a sine or a cosine? And is it a negative or a positive? So since it starts at the origin, I know that it's going to be a sine function because sine starts at the origin always on the x-axis, whereas cosine would start um, kind of at its max or its min on the y-axis. So I know it's a sine function, and it starts by going down, so I know it's a negative sine, sine function. So I know it's a negative sine function. Okay, so I know that my a is going to be a negative number. So when I write my equation, it's going to be y equals a negative number, sum whatever my a is. And my a has to do with the amplitude. So the amplitude is how far it reaches from the midline. So this particular graph doesn't have um, any sort of vertical shift because I can see half of it is above the x-axis and half of it is below the x-axis. I can see that the amplitude, the distance it stretches here is 3, and the distance from the midline to the min is also 3, because of I read my y scale. I know that this is 3, and that's negative 3. So I know that my a value is 3. So I know that a is 3, because my amplitude here is 3. So it's going to be a negative 3, because it, the shape tells me it goes down. Remember, a positive sign starts by going up and then down. And then it's going to be a sine function. And then I'm going to have to find my b value. Right? So I found my b value next. So the b has to do with the period. And I know the rule for period is 2 pi over b. So if the period is 2 pi over b, I need to see what is the period. So the period is the distance it takes to make one wave along the x-axis. Okay, so one wave starts here and ends here. What is this value? So my x min, this value is minus pi. Um, this value is pi. And then here, um, I do want you to be able to recognize 0.785 um, as pi over 4. I'm not going to give you um, a a totally random decimal here and you have you have to be able to identify what's pi over 12 or pi over 6 just some basics you're gonna have to um, be able to represent um, be able to recognize pi pi over 4 and then if you look at the other graph um, this would be 2 pi um, this would be negative 2 pi and then this value here 1.5 that's half of pi that's pi over 2 those are the the values that you're gonna need to be able to recognize in decimal Okay, so I know that uh, my x max, so the end of my graph, so the last one is pi. And then over here, the x min, that's negative pi. So my period, the length along the x-axis it takes to make one wave is pi. So I know that this period is pi. So I can solve this equation for b. So I'm just going to cross multiply, so I get b times pi equals 2 pi. I'm going to divide both sides by pi and I get that b is 2 because my pi's cancel. So I know that this is my b. So that is my equation. You would have to look for a vertical shift but there was none since the midline was on the x-axis. So that is our equation. So move on to the second one. So for the second we are going to um, highlight one period. So since we don't have any horizontal shifts, we're looking to see where it's starting on the x-axis, um, or sorry, starting on the y-axis, um, and it started here, and it went up. So if it starts on the in the kind of middle, right, we can see our midline here. 
if it starts on the midline, then it's a sine function. It went up, so it's a positive sine function. So I know that this is a sine function and a is positive. So it's going to be y equals some number, it's a positive number, sine of something. Um, I know that it has a vertical shift downward, um, so I need to make sure that I find the correct d value, the midline. Okay, so the midline looks like it's at about negative 2, but I want to confirm it because I need to make sure that this distance is the same as this distance. So we're going to look at our scale. My y max is 5, my y min is negative 5. Okay, so um, you can kind of see the tick marks, but let's just check. It looks like it's going down to minus 5, and it looks like this is at minus 2 maybe. So that would mean if it went from minus 2 to minus 5 this would be 3. Um, but over here if it's at minus 2 then it would go up 1, 2, 3 which would be an A value of 3. So it does look like those distances are 3. Um, one way to find your D value would be to find the average between these two values. So you could do, um, you have a 1 and a minus 5, and you can find the average of those being 3. Okay, so that tells us that my D, um, my A value is 3 my d is negative 2. So as I was just saying, to find the d value, it's the average of the max and the min, which is max plus min over 2. So my max value was 1 plus my min value, which was negative 5, and divided by 2. Right? My max was at 1 my min was at negative 5. If I find the average of those, I'll get the middle, right? That's what the average is. So this is negative 4 over 2, which is 2. So algebraically, we can find the midline by finding the average um, of the max and the min. You could easily find the midline by just guesstimating where it is and then counting up and counting down, just doing it visually. Um, in either case, sorry, this should say a minus 2. Uh, we get that the D is a negative 2. Okay, so we found our A value was 3 because the amplitude was 3, and we found that the D was a negative 2. So all we have left to do is to find the period. So we're going to use the period formula. We're going to use that period is 2 pi over B, and we're going to figure out what the period is. So my X max is 2 pi, because this value is 2 pi. So I know on this, that this value is 2 pi. Um, and if you look at your X scales, pi over 2, 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. So that is, um, when you have the period being 2 pi, um, we just have to solve our equation, and we get that B equals 1. So I know that it's 1x, or just x, because you don't have to write the 1. So this would be the equation um, for this graph that I highlight. So in your homework, you're going to have to highlight one period. Um, and we're always going to be looking for it starting on the y-axis. So we're just going to locate where it is on the y-axis and highlight one period. Okay, one period. And I am checking to make sure that you know what one period is, um, not one period and a little more. Okay, well that is all. Hope you have a good night.